the really quick, obvious one, then the broader question, do you expect Christian to play Thursday night? Um, I'm hopeful. Um, I have to see, uh, I'll have to see, you know, how he responds to uh, getting out there today, but uh, it was great to have him out there. And what have you learned, you think, in his absence about the way that Joe calls games, some of the skill guys, maybe even the offense altogether, without having a guy in the lineup like that, still finding a way to make it work? Um, you know, I, I think we have a good, complete offense. I think um, Mike's played great. I think uh, Teddy has has led the offense at a high level. I think uh, Joe and his staff come up with a great plan. I think uh, we have some real receiving targets on the outside. Our offensive line, uh, no matter who's been in there, has done a great job. And um, I think Joe's uh, Joe's got a great feel for calling games. Let's go to David Newton and then Joe Person. Hey, man, along the lines of Christian, can you tell us how much work he was able to do and, and how he looked doing it? Um, I'm not going to get into, you know, practice and all those things. Um, I, I think he, you know, I will say, I, th I think he looks good. Was, you know, he looks, he looks like he's, uh, looks like he's moving around great. So just, uh, again, just, um, you know, we'll, we'll let the medical people and him, you know, and, and, you know, just determine, you know, how much he can do or, or when he can, you know, you know, go out and play in a game. But um, I thought he looked good and it was good to have him out there. Matt, how much does the short week sort of, complicate things if that's I'm not sure that's the right word affect or impact his status and then secondly uh, then this is a decision and a discussion you have with every injured player but is it a little more uh, is it take on more importance with a guy like McCaffrey and especially one like McCaffrey who seems so in tune with his body um, I, I think it's, I, I think we take the same approach with every player. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't want guys um, putting their careers in jeopardy. Um, you know, the, the reality is um, you're, you're not, you know, once the season starts, you're never going to be a hundred percent, you know, so, but you know, so, you know, guys have to battle through things, but at the same time, we don't want to bring anybody uh, back too soon. That being said, I think it differs by position. I think, um, you know, an O lineman, a D lineman can can deal with some different injuries. I think when you're talking about uh, a running back, you know, who obviously makes their living running, cutting, um, producing power, um, you have to you have to make sure that they have you know that they have all those skill sets available to them. So that's you know that's been our approach with him, but also our approach with Reggie um, as you know Reggie comes back from the same injury, just making sure that they. When they go out there, they have, you know, they have all their skills that they need to go out and play at a, a really high level. In terms of this week, um, you know, I think from any injury, every day is, you know, every day is crucial. You know, the, the, the more time you have, uh, the more important it is, you know, the, the better chance you have of playing. Um, but, um, you know, that being said, you know, we're, we're playing on Thursday night and, uh, you know, for the, our whole team, whoever can go is going to go and whoever can't, you know, um, you know, we'll, we'll trust their backups. Go to Mike Salarte and then Jason Huber. Coach, uh, just for clarification, and maybe Bruce can can help you with this because I know you're not, you don't have the rules in front of you, but the starting of the 21-day clock, does he therefore not get an injury designation today because he's in that three-week window? Yes. Okay. And then uh, to follow that up, um, you guys have lost a couple in a row, a couple of games that you were in, as opposed to what Atlanta's gone through. When you, when you talk about confidence and, and going into a game like you have on Thursday, is this an opportunity maybe for you guys, knowing that you've played pretty well, even though you didn't get the results, you may have, feel like you've got a little more confidence on your side than a group like Atlanta who suffered through another late come from behind loss that they went through with Detroit. Um, you know, for me, I, I only worry about us. Um, you know, we, we played Atlanta once already this year. We know, we know what we're up against. Um, we know, we know the type of team that they are. We know, we know the way that they play. And so we know it'll be an absolute battle. I, I think for us, confidence wise, you know, we've, we've won three games and in those three games, we had double digit leads and, um, you know, we were able to win the game. We didn't quite put it away the way we want. Um, we've had four losses. And in three of those losses, you know, we had the ball at the end of the game with a chance to go, you know, as I say, take the last shot, you know? So um, I think we should feel really confident about who we are as a team because we go out there and we battle and, and we have a chance to, 
we have a chance to be in every game. Um, I think we're a fun team to be around. The games are fun. You know, they, they come down to the end. Um, what we're trying to do is trying to get, you know, all of us to just get a little bit better. It, it's difficult on a short week. I think these short weeks, they really, um, they really test who you are as a team and who you are as, as, as individuals, because you've got to, you've got to, you know, strap it back up, you know, when you're not, you know, normally guys are starting to feel good by Wednesday, Thursday, and they have to go strap it back up and go play. So, but in terms of confidence, I think we're a confident group. Um, you know, we, we believe that we, when we play well, we we're, we're going to have a chance to win games. Hey Matt, uh, just want to ask you, so how, how confident or, how, how much confidence have you seen kind of grow with Brian Burns these last few weeks? And, and following up on that, uh, how do you guys, we asked him yesterday and he said it's something that, you know, you'll be working on this week with a lot more double teams coming towards him now. Uh, and kind of that's something that's starting to take place. Yeah. I mean, he's a tremendous pass rusher. So when you're a great pass rusher, they're going to chip you. They're going to nudge you. They're going to double you. They're going to slide to you. Um, you know, that's, that's the life of being one of those guys, you know? So, um, uh, you know, as Brian makes this, the, 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 the journey to being, uh, the best that he can be, you know, he's going to under, has to understand that, you know, you, you don't get to sneak up on anybody, you know, you get, you get everyone's best and you get, you know, you get two on ones and passing situations. And so that a, that opens up things for other guys and B, you know, you, you still have to find a way to win. And, um, um, I like his approach to that. He's he's finding a way to work at that, and uh, um, I'm, I've been very pleased with his play. Um, as I said yesterday, the challenge for him is to become a consistent all around player um, that that plays at a really really high level for long long stretches, and he's working hard to do that. Let's go to Miles Simmons and then Elena Getzenberg. Hey Matt, uh, this is sort of off topic, but uh, since training camp, notice that Taylor Moten has spiked the ball when you guys get into the end zone on offense. And it, it's something that uh, we asked Teddy Bridgewater about yesterday, and he said that it's kind of about acknowledging the fact that everybody has a hand in scoring. Just what do you think about that approach to things and um, the way that those guys like to celebrate one another in success like that? Um. I'm probably an old school hand the ball, the official type of person. Um, that being said, when we celebrate, as long as we celebrate together, I'm all in. When the defense picks the ball off or gets a turnover and they go and they huddle up and take a picture together, when a guy scores and hands the ball to an offensive lineman and he spikes it, when um, guys celebrate, um, I want us to have joy. But the most important thing I want us to do is be a team. And so having joy and celebrating together is really the key. And so, um, I think it's pretty cool to recognize the fact that the offensive line is a major part of, of any success that we have. And I think Teddy said it really well. Hey, Matt, I just wanted to clarify. I have two questions. First, I want to clarify. It looked like Eli left practice early. Was that some, did anything occur during practice for him? No, he just, um, just, just, just didn't feel like he could go. So we sent him inside for treatment. Um, you know, some of our guys, we, sometimes it's better just to have guys inside, you know, getting getting treatment and trying to get them as close as possible. Yeah. And I was just curious um, with Dante, you know, he played most of the game Sunday. And he's not showing up on the injury report anymore. You kind of what did you see from him Sunday? And are you pretty confident with where he's at right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing his toughness shine through that he's he's playing, you know, he's playing. um through something. And um, I think, you know, he's he's experimented a lot um, with different shoes and different, you know, different things that they're doing to make sure that he has the best chance possible of, of, of not tweaking that. So um, that's I think that's been a major part of it as well as, you know, Donnie Toner and Kevin King and um, um, uh, his people, you know, uh, his, his shoe people, you know, all working together to to get him um the best chance of, of not just kind of rejamming that toe, you know, every time he plays. All right, let's go to Josh Klein and then Phil Orban. Hey, Matt. Um, I know that Trent Scott played a little bit of guard for you on, uh, on Sunday, and he's played left tackle in the past with Russell and John, both uh, kind of questionable right now. Where do you think that Trent Scott – fills in best for you if you had kind of your choice of where you could put him and uh and do you uh would you expect him to kind of rotate in with either Dennis or or Greg 
um, if both John and, and Russell miss time? Really, I think, you know, he helps us at both. Um, you know, during that stretch, you know, going out to L.A. and then playing Arizona, um, I thought he did a good job at left tackle. Um, he comes over, you know, this week and all of a sudden he's got to kick over right guard uh, and and does it um, even though he was out all week. You know, I, I love him inside because I think he's a big, powerful man that can move, you know, move people. But, um, you know, one thing about Trent Scott is he's a he's a football he's a football guy. He's in here, you know, every morning at six. Uh, he loves the game. And so he he's he's so unbelievably valuable um, to any football team, but especially in this year with COVID and all the protocols and things like that, restrictions that we're under because um, he can he can pretty much back up any position. Uh, just one quick follow up on on Greg Little. Um, he. I know last year when he was available, he, he did almost all of his reps at left tackle. Have you guys thought about moving him around maybe in practice just to see if he can, uh, if he can produce at other spots? Like, like you're talking about like right now or in, in training camp? Uh, either one really. Yeah. In training camp, he, you know, he played a little bit on the right side. Um, but, um, but it was mainly, a, you know, mainly a left tackle. Um, and, you know, since, since he's, since he's, you know, gone into play. I mean, I've been really happy, really happy with his play and his development. So I think he's one of those uh, young players that, um, you know, played last year, played, you know, in a different system. And now all of a sudden now, you know, Pat comes in, he's teaching things a different way. And, um, you know, he, he, Greg was a little bit limited early in camp with that injury. Um, so I think he's had to get comfortable doing it our way, doing it a new way. And I think he's gotten really comfortable. So, could he kick over to right tackle? Yeah, he, he could kick over. Um, but uh, to me, he's he's uh, he's playing really well at left tackle when he has a chance to play. Hey, Matt, you mentioned having the final shot in three of those losses. Understanding there are no moral victories. When you have a young team, you're in year one, and you put them through a little adversity. What what can you take from losses like that? Well, I mean, I think it's the same in in wins and losses. I think like there's 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 truth, there's good things, and there's bad things um, that happen in every game. And what we all have a tendency to do is when we win, we ignore the bad stuff, and when we lose, we ignore the good stuff. Right? We get emotional and we we're happy, and we just glaze over the things that are going to eventually cause us to lose. And what we try to do is just try to find the truth. You know, uh, when we win. You know, I always tell our guys, you know, don't don't wait for the house to burn down to see if the, you know, the, the smoke detectors have batteries like, you know, the, you got to check those things. But you, you have to find the problems before there's a big problem. And then you also have to find the positives even when you lose. Doesn't mean you're accepting losing. There's not one part of that that means you're accepting it. It just means you're looking at the way that we play, the details, the standards, how hard we play. And we're saying, hey, this is good. This is bad. This needs improved and just working on those things. And so, you know, I mean, a uh, uh, a week ago, we lost, you know, two weeks ago, we lost a game where we, you know, we did about everything you can do wrong and still had the ball with a chance to go tie it up at the end. And then, you know, this past week, you know, we played a, we played a, a, a veteran team on the road. We battled back and forth and, and, you know, we, we gave up th third downs at a level we don't want to. We, you know, we missed some opportunities to score touchdowns. And yet at the same time, we still have the ball at the end. And so the message is very simply, um, a, you know, you're 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 a good team that's getting better every week. Just keep getting better, and then B, um, um, you know, understand that these games are going to come down to the end, and enjoy that. And you know, you have to go make big plays at crucial times, but you also have to understand that none of us really know when when the play that wins the game is going to happen. So you have to go out every play and 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 not take a play for granted. And so, I just think there's a lot of great lessons there. We have a lot of really young players, and if they can learn that, a lot of them are just trying to figure out, hey, A, can I play in the NFL? And then B, can we – now that they start seeing, like, hey, I can play in the NFL, and, hey, we're going to win. Like, we're, 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 we're in all these games. We're winning some. Some we're just a little bit away from. Hey, let's just get a little bit better. When you have that mentality, um, you start to control your own destiny. You don't think it's all this other stuff, and you get better and better and better. And that's all I want is for us to try to get better each week. Um, and, 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 and make some of those last shots and win the game. Let's go to Joe Person and then Jonathan Alexander. Hey, Matt, we saw Christian come out initially today in a red jersey. Was there some question kind of as you all were making an 11th hour decision type deal? And then also, if it's not this week with him, do you think it would be next week? Um, I'm, I'm probably, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be able to like say like hypothetically, you know, I, like I said, I'm hopeful. 
I'm, I want to win, you know, today. So I'm hopeful that it's today, you know, um, but it, you know, it won't be the only thing I say is it won't, it won't be a, a minute too early. You know, we'll, we'll be smart. Um, and, and then at the beginning of practice, um, yeah, you know, we let them know, Hey, we're, Hey, we're, that we're, we're pulling the trigger on this thing. Um, and, uh, and to be quite honest, his black jersey wasn't in his locker. So sometimes the communication, <laughs> um, isn't what it is. So then he came out with no Jersey. And so it was just one of those kind of things. Hey Matt, um, hope you're doing well. Um, if, you know, I guess Eli dealt with that hamstring. If he can't go um, Thursday, how might you handle that backup situation behind Pride and, and Jackson, especially with um, Jackson's toe? Yeah, I think Jack, I think Dante's back to full strength. But but you know, as you said, I mean, something could always happen to any of these guys. I think we would um, we would turn to we would turn to Corn. We would turn to Stantley. We we would turn to those guys and um, and play them. Right, guys, we only have time for two more, so let's go to Skylar Callahan and then finish with Mike Slarte. Hey, Matt, forgive me if you've been asked this before, but we've heard you and, and several of the players talk about just trying to get 1% better every single day, whether it's practice game or whatever. Where did you kind of pick that phrase up, and 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 do, how important do you think it is that these guys use that not only during the winning streaks but the losing – or not during just the losing streaks, but whenever you go through a three-game win streak as well? Um. You know where I first heard it. I don't know. I, I think I think it was a uh, the book Legacy, which is the story of the All Blacks, and I think that's their. I think I think that's that's where I first heard that. Just their their mindset, their their frame, their their mind frame is. You know, the, everyone always has opinions on what the team should do. You know, when you're on the team, coaches, players, everybody. And my mindset is always the best way to improve the team is to improve yourself. And if you can if you can go out and get one percent better every day. Um, then you wake up and in a, in a week you're 7% better. And, you know, the math probably doesn't necessarily work that way, but it's, it's a way of life, right? Um, to control the things that you can control and not just control them, but excel at the things that you can control. And um, part of that is very deliberate practice. Guys having a plan, you know, in training camp would ask guys, like, hey, what are you working on today? Um, sometimes guys can just go through the motions and so they're practicing, but they're not getting better. And what, what we want is we want guys to say, hey, I need to work on this. Hey, I need to work on that. The ability to, to be self-critical is one of the greatest traits in a football player and um when guys are confident they're not defensive they go out there and say hey I, hey what do i need to work on i think i need to work on this they come up with a plan for it and um you know so that's just it's just a way of life and it's the same thing with the coaches you know i want the coaches to be you know really critical really self-evaluate when we win and when we lose and as you said the truth is there whether you win or whether you lose you know the keys to get better um no football team is the same from September to October to November to December. I mean, you, the teams get better and better and better, or they don't. And so we want to be a team that every year gets better and better and better. Coach, back to Christian. Uh, I know that you're waiting to hear from the doctors and the trainers and see how his pain is after working out today and you're going through the steps. But has he been? Chir has Christian been chirping at you, saying, I'm ready, let me out there, let me go? I mean, you know, doing all the things that he wants to do, if he feels that way, I mean, what's that – What's that been like dealing with him if he's been that kind of guy or what's he been like in all this? I mean, Christian's a, a very even keel, poised process guy. I mean, he knows that he knows that there's steps that you have to take to get where you want to be. And so he's um, he's just, uh, you know, I think he's I think he was excited and exhilarated to be out there today, um, to be out there with his teammates, to, to have a chance to, to practice. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, I, I know he wants to play, but I also know he's. He's a, a process guy and understands that we can't, you know, we can't shortcut the process.